Guys, welcome to this month's edition of Chemical of the Month. Uh, bring out your charts and bring out your NIOSH guide. And we're going to go for an eight minute ride on a Chemical of the Month. Remember, we're, we're, I'm using version 16. We'll talk about how to get version 16 after, the, uh, a after this lecture. First chemical we're going to talk about is formic acid. There's formic acid. Remember we talked about it in the class polydrum. It's a clue that this is a corrosive. The label kind of confirms it, but we're still going to bring our instruments in based on the hazmat IQ system. Step number one. Here's the model. Step number one. I'm dispatched. I will use the chart. Within 20 seconds, I will say if it's above or below the line and try to come up with the playbook. What does that mean? I look for formic acid, which is the first name. Yeah, guys, look, formic, if you were trying to find formic here, you couldn't find formic in 10 seconds. So there's an easier way. So remember, you can use chart one, but heck, who wants to use that? Let's use chart two. And we go down the alphabetical list and we look for form. Is it there? No. So what See is that? It? I came all the way here. I can't find formic acid. And the answer is no. It answers this question. Is the first name of the chemical listed below? Formic. No. So initially, we, uh, we know this. This is my starting point for formic acid. I will assume, based on my size, of that it's a gas. Being a gas, I've got a 300-foot hot zone. The vapors are heavier than air. It's got an LEL and a UEL, a flash point. It means it's flammable. It polymerizes. So we better bring the temperature gun. It has an IP. I don't know what the IP is yet. I'm just saying it has an IP. I'm saying also there's carbon and hydrogen, so I'm predicting I could use the FID. Next, I predict, listen to this clue, you guys, formic acid. Any bets on it being an acid? Heck yeah, it's an acid. So it's an acid, but how about fluorine? Does formic acid have fluorine? Well, if we don't know in the size up, that means yes, it has fluorine. Is formic acid radioactive? Heck, I don't know. I don't know in the size of it means yes, so we're assuming it's radioactive. Is it toxic? Yes, and since it's above the line, above the lines are toxic in parts per million. And the last prediction we'll make based on it being above the line is yes, it's water and air reactive. And if you look at the last bullet in your above the line box, it says continue your size up on chart number three. So let's turn to chart number three and Chris will walk us through chart number three on formic acid. All right, so first well, I'm going to start at the left top. Uh, I'm going to ask myself, is this have any char clues? Remember what that meant, carbon and hydrogen. So I'm looking, I break it into syllables, syllables I go formic acid. Is formic form there? Yes. I look for form, I there say it yes. Is. I follow the flow chart and go down and try to match the second name, acid. Do I see the word acid? I find the word acid and it looked, there's a number to the left, it's a red five. I go over the air, say red five, everyone responding is aware what I'm responding to and what I have, just as if I said full arrest or visible flame and smoke. And I come across and now I identify what we believe hazmat is. Here's where the rubber meets the road. What are the hazards, what are the meters, and what do I wear, and at what level do I get out? It's all right there in one spreadsheet. So Chart what are the hazards? What are the hazards of red fives? I don't care if it's formic acid, acetic acid, if it's butyric acid. They're all yes at the char box, acid red five. And just like Joe asked, these are flammable, toxic, and corrosive. I need meters to measure those hazards. I need to wear to those hazards and when to get out. So look, let's go. Let's match hazards with meters, PPE with hazards. So check this out. Acid, flammable. What meter do you bring for flammability? CGI. Perfect. What do you wear for flammability? Turnout gear. Perfect. You have toxic. What are your toxic meters? Right? Self-contained breathing apparatus and the green instruments that are the poison meters. The PID, FID, Freon, or Draeger tube. I will protect myself from breathing in that toxicity using SCBA. The next hazard, it's corrosive. What do you use to measure corrosivity? pH paper. How do you protect yourself from corrosivity? Don't touch it. <laughs> Pretty good, Chris. Not bad. We're done with the size up now, and we go to the book. We go to page number 149, we look up formic acid, and here's formic acid. When we go to the book, notice, this is on the side of chart number three. I just cut it and pasted it here. 
This is what we do. We check to see, hey, we predicted formic acid was a gas. We look in the description box and it says liquid. Who's freaking out? Hot zone is what now? You reduce it from 300 to 150. The next number of importance, is it explosive? New information for you non-chart 16 students. Chart 16 tells you that explosives have ERG guides 112, 113, and 114. This does not have 112, 113, or 14. Not explosive. Next, is it radioactive? Again, back to the guide number. It's not in the 160s. It is not radioactive. Does it polymerize? Look, back to the ERG guide number. No P, nothing down here in the incompatibilities and reactivities. Formic acid does not polymerize. Is it corrosive? Well, we could learn up here in the ERG if it was a gas or not, but we know this is a liquid, so we cannot use that to determine corrosivity. But check this out down here. The best clue you will ever get for corrosivity. This says corrosive to metals. Dude, you made out of metal? No, but what are the first two letters of metal? M-E. So if it's corrosive to metals... It's corrosive it, to me. Perfect, perfect, perfect. How about F? Even though the word begins with formic, that doesn't mean there's an F. You go to the formula, and guess what letter you look for? F. Is it there? No. No F, so you're not F'd. So I expect the F paper to stay pink. Okay, now let's look at flammability, you guys. Does it have a flash point? The answer is yes. The flash point is 122 degrees, meaning formic acid is flammable, but you've got to heat it to 122 for it to become flammable. What's the OC mean in parentheses? Cholesterol. Who cares if it's open cup or closed cup? 122 is the number I'm going with. So if we're out on the highway today and it's 80 degrees and the spill temperature is 80 degrees, formic acid is not flammable. If it's 80 degrees air temperature, the sun's beating down on the interstate and it's 140, is it flammable yeah, today? right now. It's flammable. So you got to know the spill temperature, which we use the temperature gun for. All right, molecular weight. Chris, I heard you once say that all liquids are heavier than air. Is that true? That's true. Let's verify. Air weighs what? 29. What's formic acid weigh? 46. Get right on. And guys, for the PhD out there, we know water weighs 18. All right, you got to get that right. All right, next thing, solubility. Does it mix with water? The answer is mixes with water. Good, we can maybe dilute it. All right, IP. Now the question is, can I use a PID or not? 11.505. Hmm, what's your lamp? Chris? 10.6. Is that a PID yes or PID no? PID no. Thank God we bought the FID. But what about if you're with a CST and they got an 11.7? PID, yes. Who's wanting to see that CST? Anybody? Raise your hand. Not me. Not me. All right, let's see if the FID works because everybody's buying it. Does it have carbon and hydrogen? Hey, yes, Chris, what if it says hydrogen and carbon? Is that cool? Same thing. Same thing. Okay, excellent. Next hazard. Is it air or water reactive? We look in the incompatibilities. We see no air. We see no water. So it is not air or water reactive. So we've sized up. We verified, we chose our PPE, we know that it's an acid, we're not going to get it on our skin, we're ready to work, and we will work unless we hit a red light. If we hit a red light, decision time. Go or not go. When are you going? When I got a line of sight rescue and my F paper did not turn yellow. What if you're doing plumbing because somebody spilled it on the highway? At 0% of the LEL, I do plumbing. At 1% of the LEL, I'm out and change the environment. Perfect. So that's this month's edition of the Hazmat IQ Chemical of the Month. Please come back often so you can continue practicing on the system. And the archives are on our webpage, www.hazmatiq.com. No, www. No, I forgot. Hazmatiq.com. All right, guys. Peace out.